All right, everyone, it's time to talk about Beto O'Rourke, whose campaign, it's been on the skids anyway, but now it's even more on the skids because of Project Veritas's release yesterday. Uh, apparently, uh, they managed to infiltrate the O'Rourke campaign. Now, keep in mind, Beto has been ahead in no polls in the last month, only a few polls before that, which were possible outliers. In the aggregate, Ted Cruz is six and a half points ahead. He's ahead in early voting. He's won the state of Texas anyway. Uh, Beto O'Rourke will probably do more poorly now, though, because of Project Veritas. What's happened is apparently multiple staffers were uh, attempting to appropriate campaign resources. Um, and, and you have to be high enough up in the campaign, obviously, to actually do that. They were freeing up some campaign vans and sending, like, uh, pallets of water and other goods and services to the migrant caravan down in Mexico. That's a big no-no. You see that, in, in fact, is illegal under U.S. campaign finance law. No, you can't do that. If you're getting money for a campaign, you use it to campaign. You're not supposed to turn around and, and buy nice gifts for your, your, basically, political pawns. By the way, does this not show that some of the claims of the right are actually true? They've been claiming that there are groups within the United States coordinating actively and politically motivated, number one, and politically connected groups attempting to help the migrant caravan for partially political reasons. Well, at least the first two points, I guess, are true. People on the Beto campaign were taking Beto O'Rourke's money to do this. Now, of course, he's going to come and say, well, I didn't give permission for this. There's a 99% chance that's true, too. I don't think that they came to Beto and said, hey... Can we use some of the money in this very close race to go and give water to a bunch of migrants? After all, the migrant caravan has become a major political issue, so it behooves us for strategic purposes to do that? No, says Beto, if he's sane. I don't think they approached him at all over this, but the fact that he has a bunch of young, idealistic staffers doing this, uh, they're in trouble potentially in a legal sense. They could go to prison for a very long time or pay a big-ass fine because of this. I wonder who would pay off their fine for them. Pay for their bail. I'm sure some group would come along and do that. Maybe the ACLU at this point because they made it clear that they've, they've become just another Democratic puppet, uh, which is sad because they didn't used to be that. The Republicans have always said that, but they've always been wrong until the last couple of years. Uh, you've got a situation where a candidate who's already behind, 6.5 points in the aggregate, at least 3 points according to an outlier poll that shows a rosier picture for Beto. He's behind in early voting. He's already basically lost anyway. Now he's going to get hammered by this. It's sort of like when you look at the Democratic Party today, Project Veritas is really shaking things up right now. It's very funny when people try to shoot the messenger. Like the other day, someone was trying to say that uh, James O'Keefe was like a pervert and stuff. And they were questioned by one of my fans on the thread on, on Twitter. Well, you know, where's your source? They totally ignored it. That's because it's a shill. <laughs> it's a common tactic. It, it seems like labeling somebody a pervert is now the go-to method. Like calling them a Nazi before was the go-to method. Basically, well, you're a Nazi. You're a fascist. You, you said something 10 years ago that's suspect. Therefore, no one should listen to you, no matter what you're saying or what you're talking about. Everyone should hate and revile you. You should be, you know, kicked out of existence altogether. Now it's declaring someone a pervert. We see this more and more commonly because the Me Too movement has shown, unfortunately, it works. Now, eventually, that breaks itself down. It deconstructs itself Marx style uh, because it's no longer possible to make it stick unless you have incontrovertible evidence. Uh, but it's still, it is still happening. They've tried to do this with Assange. They've done it with O'Keefe. They've done it with a bunch of people. They do it to e-celebs all the time, online commentators. Now, uh, Veritas, though, has crushed uh, McCaskill's campaign, it seems. If you combine early voting with perceived poll movement, if we get one or two more polls, I, I'm, I'm asking... Can these polling firms please do like a one-day quick poll in a state like Missouri? Give me two or three more numbers to work with so that I'm sure that I can declare, yes, McCaskill is out. The Republicans have gained one of the greatest victories they can in an election heavily tilted against them from day one. That would be the ultimate goal. Fending off Beto O'Rourke was never a problem. Ted Cruz is a well-known, nationally well-known uh, uh, individual, incumbent advantage, in a state that tends to be red anyway. And it looks like Beto could lose by 10 points. Well, that'd be a historically normal average. Where's your blue wave? I thought it was going to be a squeaker because Texas is going to go blue. Well, Ted Cruz isn't even that well liked. A lot of Trump fans don't like Ted Cruz. They still haven't forgiven him. I don't like Ted Cruz. If I was in Texas, it would take a bit of effort for me to convince myself that I should vote for him unless the polls all showed a statistical tie at the time. 
Otherwise, it'd be like, yeah, but he doesn't need my vote, and I really kind of want to stand on principle. Maybe I should just vote for Mickey Mouse. I don't like Ted Cruz at all. He's too religious. He tried to become president while being ineligible. He was born in Canada. Uh, you know, he's got all these different, and he lived there as a resident, didn't even renounce his citizenship until a couple of years into his Senate. Uh, a time he was already like what 42 years old before he renounced his, his dual citizenship why that ted do you wanted to see more all-american like an evangelical texan instead of the canadian you actually are i mean there's a reason why why your accent sounds a little bit different from the normal uh northern texan there's a reason for that i wonder why uh but i mean here's the thing he's gonna win yeah but o'rourke at this point basically has no chance the same is true in tennessee and then Project Veritas comes out and says, oh, look, Ben O'Rourke's staffers are directly aiding the migrant caravan. Like everyone on the right fucking told you was happening, and it was considered a conspiracy theory. So Project Veritas, the, the big victory they scored with this, because Beto was already on the ropes, the big victory they've scored is that they've shown that people that are working for an active democratic campaign are attempting to coordinate goods and services for the migrant caravan. That's basically what Trump's been talking about. Everyone called him a tinfoil hat-wearing nut. Oh, you're lying, Mr. Trump. That's not true at all. Well, <laughs> I guess not. It doesn't need to be directly financed centrally by, like, George Soros or the Clinton Foundation in order for it to be coming from the Democratic Party. These are staffers working on a major Democratic Senate campaign. I would not be surprised if this was replicated in other campaigns, too. Now, the fact that Beto O'Rourke's not probably organizing it isn't going to help him any. He's already 5, 10 points behind, so fuck him. Uh, but, and then also, uh, also, by the way, as an aside on the migrant caravan issue, it is technically both true and untrue that it's being financed by Soros. Number one, uh, only a small proportion of that actual financing is coming from anything related to him. Number two, he's filtered the money down through two stages of Minutemen. That is that there's a, a pro-migrant group that in turn gets funded by a Soros group so that it disappears the fact that that's what it's actually earmarked for. It's perfectly legal to do this. Using middlemen to skirt general rules or to hide the fact that you're financing something quite common. And because he's not actually a politician, and these aren't like, like uh, groups related to the election directly, it's not even illegal for them to shuffle money like this. Unless they're sponsoring criminal action. Now you can make a case for that, but you know, historically speaking, I don't think... They haven't entered the country illegally yet, so even if they declare an intent to do so, they haven't at this moment broken any U.S. law. So, uh, yeah, you couldn't uh, charge George Soros. Maybe you could uh, hold him complicit in their various crimes. Like if they come to the border and start throwing rocks at the soldiers. And Trump has said, hey, if they start throwing rocks at our dudes, they can respond with live fire because, you know, we're going to assume that that's a lethal threat. Technically speaking, yeah, you can. But I'm not sure that would be the greatest idea for anyone but the core Trump fans. I would oppose it. Uh, no, I don't. Especially when, again, they're going to put pregnant women and children up in front specifically to keep you from doing that. You do have to understand that that's the case. And if Trump were to give the order to fire, I think Mattis would probably countermand the order anyway. He'd say, nope, we're not doing that at this moment. There's no compelling reason, Mr. Trump. So uh, what did you say, Mr. Trump? I seem to be temporarily deaf at the moment. I didn't get that. You said to hold your fire? Okay, we're holding fire. Whoops, you know, the, the earpiece was cut out. Modern technology, eh, says Mattis. Uh, no, I don't think he's going to do that. Uh, Beto O'Rourke is basically, though, his career is basically finished. He was, gonna, he was being groomed, I think, for a presidential run. They wanted younger, uh, political firebrand, able to connect with the younger voters, okay, the bluing of Texas, whatever, from a, mar from a pretty red state, someone that could potentially steal Texas for the Democrats. No, he's totally lost. That's about all. Peace out.